These two trust marks are basically two different banks on the same pond. So you've got to decide which side your boat is sailing from. If the company is more focused on technology, they should then push towards getting a cyber trust mark. For companies who collect a lot of consumer information, they may not rest on technology. It could be medical-based firms. It could be companies doing accounting, for example. Uh, that treasure trove, that core for personal information that they keep, they may be more better suited to a data protection trust mark journey instead of a cyber trust. But for service excellence, moving forward, what we can see being demonstrated in the market for maybe let's say the top 1% here, it is something that they receive both in hand in hand. In Singapore, different industries, okay, namely now one in the charity space. Regulators have taken a new benchmark for some of these charities to take up and one of them is the Data Protection Trust Mark with enhanced measures meant for charities. Charities are actually keeping massive amount of data, financial, medical, and they work a lot with the ministry itself. If we can take a look at the medical industry, we've seen a requirement by MOH that clinic management systems in Singapore, operators who develop these technologies, are required to have a cyber central mark specifically made for clinic management systems. There will be a new announcement coming up soon about the healthcare information build, which ties all of these two in a track. I think moving forward, it's definitely going to add value. It's also going to be maybe perhaps form of compliance that you as a particular business industry would have to adapt to or basically obtain in order to do business in the future. Yeah. A lot of data protection officers in the company are actually empowered individuals. They are not the basement level staff of an organisation. For IT roles, they do have a lot of work that they need to do, carry out on a day-to-day -day basis. Having the expectation on an IT personnel to also understand cybersecurity is akin to asking an airline pilot to fly a fighter jet. It's not the same thing. However, DPOs can actually take a very proactive step by basically just jumping onto the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore's website. A simple Google search on CSA's Cyber Essentials Check List. You have shoot statements, you have shell statements. For an entry level, you should probably as a DPO provide this checklist to your IT staff to then fill up and the responses can start from a very simple yes or no to the point where they can provide maybe a very simple point of evidence. Now for those who are taking part or using the checklist, those shell statements are sufficient to you for you to get through a baseline but in your journey for data protection trust mark, the cybersecurity excellence required for care of personal data would see you having to complete all should and shell statements collectively. When people engage us for work, it comes from basically two very simple verticals. One group are basically people who actually need to take it. It's a compulsory mode of endorsement, certification if you may. Second group of people are actually business owners who want to sleep well at night. And business owners, they understand risk. You already have to deal with a lot on your plate. And having to deal with the risk of going through a data breach, my company closes down overnight because I'm under investigation. I have to find to deal with this. Maybe something I'm going to deal with if I don't take care of it now. Cybersecurity is not a cost, it's actually an investment. Just like three little pigs, think about the pig with the house, you know, slowly build your gate around your house and then the moat around your house and then the security guard, the pig can't build all of that overnight as well. Yeah.